Hi everyone, this is Dr. Gail Carson. Welcome to Living Regret Free, a program that shows you how to live a better and more joyful life. As an added bonus, I invite you to listen to an introduction to my Mindset Matters program, which ties into this so well. Go to www.sobmindset.com. It's free and I know you will enjoy it. If you'd like to contact me personally, drop me a line at gailcarson13 at gmail.com or go to my website, www.spunkyoldbroad.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Gail Carson, your host of Living Regret Free. And before we go any further, I want to make sure that I offer this invitation to you as I have everybody else. And that is, I would love to hear from you. So if you would like a conversation with me, no obligation for anything, just a chat to find out who you all are and what you're interested in, go to my website, spunkyoldbroad.com, go to the contact page, leave me your name and so forth and any message you would like, and I will get back with you. And I'm really looking forward to this. But I'm also looking forward to my interview today with Joy Chang. And Joy has a very interesting background. She's the queen of transformational book publishing. And she's passionate about helping people write and publish their books so they can make the income and impact they desire and serve. Now, she is a Patrick Snow certified publishing coach. She's an international best-selling author. She's a TEDx and professional keynote speaker, mentor, healer, circle facilitator, and a trained yoga teacher. She is also the best-selling author of The Naked Truth, A Woman's Journey to Self-Love, about her own personal journey of healing herself naturally from deep depression and suicidal thoughts through self-love. She is the host of the podcast, The Naked Truth Movement, where she interviews guests who are willing to share inspiring stories and be vulnerable so less people feel alone. Well, welcome, Joy, to Living Regret Free. Hi, thank you so much for having me on the show, Gail. No problem. And you are a perfect person for this because, um, you know, to be in a situation where you yourself we're suffering from deep depression and suicidal loves, suicidal thoughts going all the way through to self-love. That's a humongous journey. So tell us a little bit about that journey and what self-love means to you. Sure. Yeah, it, it's been quite a journey. Um, so when I was in my 20s, I found myself really depressed and in that space where, you know, I considered um, ending my own life. And Um, To be honest, there was nothing that was going on in my life that would make it seem like I should feel that way. It wasn't like there had been something that had happened, you know, like um, a terrible loss in my life or a terrible breakup. Uh, My life was actually good at the time. I had a good job. I had family and friends that cared about me and I was in a relationship. Um, But I just felt, you know, like something was missing. And um, and so it was not only a, you know, sad time in my life, but very confusing time. And then I ended up in an abusive relationship to make it worse. Um, But actually, that was the greatest gift in my life because it really shined the light on the fact that I didn't love myself. So I didn't even know that I didn't love myself until I was in that relationship. Um, And so I started thinking, well, I must not love myself because if I did, I wouldn't be in this relationship and I wouldn't continuously put myself in this relationship. So I made a decision that, um, you know, I needed to end that relationship and learn to start loving myself. And that's what I did. And then the universe started bringing those opportunities into my life to help support me in that decision to love myself. Um, And yeah, and then that's a little bit about that journey. Um, And as far as what self-love means to me, um, yeah, it's really interesting because I never really thought about what the definition of self-love is until I started getting interviewed on podcasts and getting asked, you know, about the definition or what that means to me. And so it made me start thinking about that and, and what I and, you know, realizing and continually learning is that it's such a, it encompasses so many things. I think that, um, you know, sometimes people think it's self-esteem and self-esteem is a piece of it. It's definitely about how you feel about yourself and, um, you know, how you think like your thoughts. Um, but it's also about self-care. It's how you take care of yourself. Um, it's also self-expression. Um, there's just so many pieces. So it's really both an internal, um, 
state, in my opinion, um, like how we think about ourselves, how we feel about ourselves, as well as an external um, expression of that. So how we take care of ourselves, how we allow others to treat us um, and how we express ourselves in the world. And yeah, there's just so much to it. Well, you know, um, it's um, it's interesting that you say, you know, there was really nothing to cause you to have this depression in the first place, because usually, uh, you know, people talk about all these horrendous family issues and so forth that, that come forward to create this. But um, it, it wasn't that way with you. And uh, it was really an interesting thing, to, and that it happened to you, you know, in your mid-20s. Uh, also... Um, that it took a breakup for you to realize that you didn't love yourself. I mean, fortunately, that was good because you discovered a whole new joy. And I'm just wondering if 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 you were advising somebody, what are some of the steps that you would tell people to take to start learning to love themselves? Yeah, um, well, one of the things that was really powerful for me and that really helped me to even have that courage to finally end that relationship because it was on and off again, you know, for four and a half years. And it was really hard to, you know, actually walk away from that relationship. And so one of the things that really helped was I started realizing that there were certain beliefs that I had that were putting conditions on my own happiness. So I had a belief that if I just got married, I'd be happier, you know, and I had a belief that if I was single, I'd be miserable. Um, and so I started just questioning that and, and saying to myself, you know, how do I know that getting married is going to make me happier? Um, what if getting, I mean, obviously there's, um, a 50% divorce rate in the country. So there's probably people that are married that are unhappy. Right. And I said, and how do I know that getting, um, or being single is going to make me miserable? What if being single is the best thing that I ever did? Um, and so just by, you know, like flipping those beliefs, um, it just created that space and that. Um, gave me that strength and that courage that I needed to finally end that relationship. So I think that would be definitely a big thing is to start looking at your own beliefs, um, because I think a lot of times we don't even think about it. You know, we're not really conscious of a lot of our thoughts um, and the beliefs, and we just accept things as being true rather than like questioning them and saying, well, how do I know that that's true? Um, I would, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, asking yourself those questions are uh, are really important you know how do I know what's going to be how do I know whether or not this is going to work out how do I know whether I'm better off this way or the the other mm -hmm. way and of course we all want the answers you know we want the answers to be perfect but of course not always like that so how did you get started on the journey of being an entrepreneur well, um, so, you know, and I always knew that I was here for something bigger than myself. You know, I say that might sound cheesy, but I just always had this knowing. And um, when I was a kid, I, um, between the ages of eight to 10, my parents went through a pretty bad divorce. Um, there was a lot of yelling. And, um, but the gift in that was that we went to see different family therapists as a part of that process. And so I got introduced to the world of therapy. Um, and so you know, I just as a kid, I remember going to one of the therapists and they work from home and I thought, well, that's cool. She gets to work from home. And I liked going to see her because she had these like cookies that were really good. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like I just loved, you know, the cookies. And then um, there was another woman that we went to see in New York and she had an office in Manhattan on this high rise building. And I thought, wow, she must make a lot of money. Um, and so I thought, you know, as a kid, when my dad asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said I want to be a psychologist when I was like 10 because I thought, well, you know, I just get to get paid to talk to people and listen to them, like listen to them talk about their problems. That seems easy enough. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah. I, so that's what made me realize that I wanted to um have my own business and have my own practice. I wanted to do family and marriage counseling. So that was kind of the beginning. I didn't even realize until I looked back that I have always wanted to have my own business. But are you, you're not a, a, a therapist, are you? No, I do have a background in, I have a um, bachelor's in psychology and a master's in social work. Um, and so I, that was like the track that I was going down. And then I ended up working at Big Brothers Big Sisters, um, you know, a nonprofit mentoring organization after grad school. And it was when I was there that I got introduced to life coaching. I actually met a woman that was a life coach. Um, and part of my job at the time was to interview our volunteers and our families to be in our program. So I got to interview her and find out about her job. And so when I talked to her, I was like, wow, I never knew about coaching. Um, and so that's what made me decide to switch from therapy into coaching. Um, it just felt more aligned for me. And yeah. Wow, that's great. Um, well, you've got the background for everything. So that's wonderful. 
Now, you have this book, um, The Naked Truth, A Woman's Journey to Self-Love. What made you write that? Because that's, I assume, very revealing. Yes. I mean, if, uh, besides the cover, which is revealing itself, right? So for those who haven't seen it, I'm naked on the cover. So um, yeah, and, and basically, I've had people say, wow, that's so courageous of you to be naked on your cover, you know, and I say, well, honestly, it was scarier to be naked in the book, right? Because I bear my soul in the book. Um, so it is basically my personal diary in the world, um, along with journaling questions and practices. So it is personal and practical. Um, but what, yeah, what actually inspired me was I was at an event and there was a speaker there. Um, his name's James McNeil. And he was talking about how when we die, if we don't write our story down, it gets lost in the world forever. You know, and he said that basically nobody could share a story the way that we would. Um, so somebody else could write a book about your life, but it would never be the way that you would tell it. And that just really touched me. It really got me thinking about this idea of a legacy. You know, what is it that I want to leave behind? Um, because I had never wanted to write a book. I know there's probably people out there that, you know, have always wanted to do that. And that was never something I wanted to do um, until I heard him speak, you know, about that. And, and that was about, it was in 2014. So, Yeah. That's what inspired me. And now you are a certified publishing coach and your title is the queen of transformational book publishing. So uh, it's, it's come full circle in many ways. So um, why do you think someone would want to share their story and publish their book? Is it be, you know, I had a friend that, that used to say, don't die with the music inside of you. And that's kind of like, don't die with the book inside of you. Mm -hmm. But why do you find that people come to you and say, hey, this is what I want to do. And this is what I want to share. Yeah, I mean, I think that it, you know, it is, I, I definitely believe in that. Yeah, don't die with the book inside of you. Don't die with your story inside of you. You know, I think that our stories are so powerful because stories connect us. Right. And I've been to so many events and I'm sure you have, too, where, you know, the, the speakers up there and I'm taking all these notes. But I never remember that information later unless I go back and look at my notes. But what I do remember is their story. Right. And so, um, yeah, that's why, you know, stories are so unique and powerful and, and everyone has a unique story. And so I think that, you know, people come to me. Um, because they know that they are here to make a big impact on the world and they know that by putting themselves out there in that way that it's going to help them to make that impact. And it, of course, it also helps make more money. You know, the income is going to come with that. But um, that's really what, you know, I realize is too that and the book is really a tool for healing and transformation um, for my client and for the world because um, I believe that when we are willing to get naked, to be vulnerable, to share our truth, um, that the other people that, you know, can connect to that story, then they get to heal through that process as well. So with all that you've been through and everything that you're doing now, what does it mean to you to live regret free? Yeah, so living regret free to me means facing our fears, um, you know, to, to do the thing that scares us, um, to feel the fear and do it anyway. I think that, um, it's not an easy thing to do because, you know, fear feels very real, even though, um, you know, a lot of our fears aren't rational, right? But um, they do feel real. And so being able to recognize the fear, to notice it and feel it and then just keep going anyways. Um, so that's what it means to me to, to live regret free and to, I mean, do the things that you want to do, you know, um, follow your dreams. I mean, one of my dreams is to move to San Diego. And so I follow that dream um, five years ago and, you know, started my own business. And um, and then I had that dream to share my story. And, and now my legacy is really helping other people leave their legacy. So, yeah. And then, then the thing that I'm, you know, working on now is, um, is my first TEDx talk. And so that is, you know, that was a dream that I had as well. So I would say just to, um, yeah, follow your dreams. So have you done your TEDx talk as yet? Not yet, no. And I was going to ask you what the reaction would be. So what are you going to talk about in that in that talk? Because you get, what, 12 minutes or something like that? Yeah, so the guidelines are it has to be um, no more than 18 minutes. So, um, you know, we're thinking probably somewhere between 6 to 12 minutes. Um, I'm finalizing my talk uh, right now, and it's going to be on self-love. So and it's probably not a surprise, <laughs> but um, yeah. 
That's fantastic. That's great. Because it's very hard to, first of all, it's very hard to get in front of anybody and speak. We all know that, that it's a number one fear that people have. But mm-hmm. also, when you're doing a TED Talk, it's so it's so concentrated. I mean, you really, you know, you don't have time to mess around. You've got to get it out. And the people who are are listening to this, they're really different than being hired for a corporate audience or associations and people like that. These are really open people in the audience, but they want to hear good stuff. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's a very challenging thing, which is which is important. So, um, you know, if if someone wanted to do what you just said, share their story and publish their book, what do you recommend they do to get started? Um, well, honestly, I would definitely get support. Um, I would hire somebody, you know, whether that's me or someone else. I mean, I know that, you know, for me, I try to do it on my own, um, you know, for a few months. Um, I mean, actually, I, I had put out on the, um, put on Google Calendar, uh, May 15, 2015. I thought 51515 would be a cool date to have my book done. So I put that on my calendar and the day literally came and went. I saw the date on my calendar and I thought, oh, I was going to publish a book that day, you know, and I didn't even do anything. Um, and so then I did that again in uh, 2017. I said, OK, July 17, 71717. That's the date my book will be done. And but then this time, you know, at first I, I put that on my calendar and I just was trying to do it on my own. And I struggled for a few months and really wasn't doing anything with it. And then I had a mentor say, you know, if you're really serious about getting this book done, I would hire somebody because it's really going to, you know, make you more committed because you're going to make an investment of your time and your money. And that was definitely the best thing that I did. So I would not try to do it on your own um, because you don't know what you don't know, you know, Uh, besides just having that accountability. There's things that um, are really going to help you when you have somebody that has been there that's done it and. Um, especially when you're sharing your story too, there's so many things that come up, you know, it's really like a, a, the greatest personal development um, journey, I think that you can go on. And, you know, I think one of the things that holds people back is that they've been through some pretty painful experiences. I have clients that have been abused and, um, and so they have fears around, you know, sharing that, right. And, and that's normal and that's natural. Um, but I just tell them, well, do you think there's someone else out there who has been abused before? And maybe they think that it's their fault. And if you, you know, by sharing what you've been through could help them, would it be worth it? You know, and the answer is always yes. And so, um, but when you have someone that can hold space for you through those fears, um, it's really powerful and it can help you to actually get to the other side of it. Well, that's that's very true, and I, I do agree that if, if you put your money down, it kind of makes you take action, although I know people who do that, and they still don't take action. But uh, again, um, you know, you can write things down. This is what's really important. You can write things down, and unfortunately, the mind considers writing something down a completion, but you can write something down, but if you don't take action, if you don't implement, if you don't make something happen, nothing happens, and so... Uh, and it is amazing as you look back at some of the things that you put that down, you know, this is in my calendar and I am going to do it. But unless you block out time every day or schedule time to do it, it just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're absolutely you're absolutely uh, uh, true about that. So you also say that you are a circle facilitator. What is that? Yeah, that is um, I mean, you, that. I've led women's circles specifically. Um, You could lead co-ed circles as well. Um, And basically, so the first women's circle that I ever attended, I was at a retreat in Mexico on the beach and I had no idea what I was doing there. (laughs) I honestly was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know what to expect. I'm sitting in on the beach, although it's a beautiful place, um, you know, with these women. And basically, um, we had a rock that we were passing around. And whenever you got this rock or the stone, it was your turn to talk. And you would just share whatever you wanted to talk about. Um, And you didn't have to share either. But that was such a powerful experience because I realized that, you know, basically those thoughts I had in my head, that crazy person that's running around in my mind is in everyone else's head, right? Because if you're not um, in that kind of an experience, you don't necessarily, you might think that you're unique in that way, right? That, oh, I'm the only one that thinks this thought or that has these struggles. And what I realized sitting in that circle with these women is that we are all just the same, you know, like no matter what background you come from, um, what 
socioeconomic class, what race, what culture. Um, I mean, everything. It's like we we're all the same. You know, we all have the same fears. We all have the same desires. Um, and so that was such a powerful part of my self love journey, actually. Um, and I talk about that in my book. But you know, my part of my journey of self love was that I found it through community, um, through circles. Um, you know, both at that retreat in person as well as virtual community. Interesting. And then, of course, you teach yoga, too, which is very spiritual. And uh, mm-hmm. But there are so many forms of yoga. Are Do you teach a particular kind? Well, vinyasa, yeah, vinyasa yoga is the type of um, yoga that I, I have been trained in. Um, but to be clear, I actually don't teach yoga, and I didn't take that training to teach yoga. Um, ah. I did it, well, I did it partly to deepen my own practice. Um, you know, I, I was like, I'm not sure if I want to teach it. And I talked to somebody, and they said that no matter what, you're going to get deeper in your practice. And I was pretty inexperienced. I actually had only done yoga maybe once a week um, for like a year before I did the training. I was definitely the least experienced person in that class, and it was it was intense. I mean, we were doing like handstands, you know, things that I'm like, what is this? I don't even know how to do this stuff. And I honestly almost quit because I just felt like I went to one of the classes and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so out of my league. And I just feel like, like I, you know, in school I was like, always did well. And so I wasn't used to feeling like the worst student in the class basically. Um, But I'm really glad I didn't give up because it definitely like just, I learned so much more about yoga and deepen my own practice. And, you know, now I mean, I've been doing yoga for several years, um, you know, three or four times a week, and I just love it. And um, and I, I definitely see myself using it more with my retreats. Um, that's something that I want to do is to just take everything that I've learned and combine them and do, you know, basically like destination writing retreats. Um, and yoga will definitely be a part of that. Fantastic. Great. Well, now I want to tell everybody how to find you, Joy. So uh, what is your website? How can they connect with you? Uh, Where can they find your book? And if you have anything that you'd like to give our listeners, we're open to that as well. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so the best place to find me is, well, my website is joychang.com. That's J-O-I-E-C-H-E-N-G.com. And you can, when you go there, you can um, get all my information and read more about me. Uh, And then also my book is on Amazon and it's available in print, Kindle and the audio. Um, So whatever version, um, you know, you prefer. And it's The Naked Truth, A Woman's Journey to Self-Love. And then uh, as far as a gift for the listeners, if there's someone listening that is feeling inspired to share their story um, or, or, you know, you've had your story inside of you first for many years and you know that, you know, you got to get it out of you. Um, I would love to, you know, get on a call with you and talk to you about it and see if I can support you. So if you go to my website, you can sign up for a complimentary clarity breakthrough call. That sounds great. Now, remember, it is um, joy, J-O-I-E. That's very important. You spell it that way, J-O-I-E. And it's Chang, C-H-E-N-G dot com. So joychang.com. And you can find everything there that you you need to. And um, uh, I want to remind everybody to go to my website, spunkyoldbroad.com, if you'd like to have a conversation with me. And I would like to do the same with you. Just feel free to leave me your contact information and we'll go from there. Now, Joy, we have two minutes left. So if you could leave our audience with one message what would that be? Go after your dreams. I think that's the best way to live regret-free is just to, yeah, go for your dreams. Go for your dreams, whatever it is. And don't let anybody talk you out of them. I mean, you know, it may take you a while. People are going to be naysayers. You might find uh, a lot of stumbling blocks and obstacles in your way, but that's called life. And uh, (laughs) that's going to happen for sure. But if you right. really want it, you know, it's like people that say it only took me, what, 20 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> exactly. It's kind, of, yeah. it's kind of like that, you know. So yeah, go don't give dream. up. Yeah, exactly. Do not give up no matter what. Um, and that's that's key. That's so important. So um, I want to thank you so much for being with us today, Joy. It's been a pleasure. It's so nice to know that there are people that can come out of a dark cloud and come to the other side, which you definitely have. And the fact that you are, you know, living your dream and that you're pursuing your dream and you are, you know, you're doing all the things that you want to do 
and you, you're not stopping. I mean, you have so much more to go. You're getting ready for your TED Talk. And I mean, all of that is so wonderful. So I, I really commend you for all of that because it's nice to hear a, a good result from all of that. So again, you want to find Joy. You want to find uh, her. It's J-O-I-E. And it's Cheng, C-H-E-N-G dot com. Thanks so much for being with us, Joy. Thank you again for having me, Gail. It's been a pleasure.